having a wonderful Wednesday. I'm Sheila Brummer along with meteorologist C.T. Tonklin. It's wonderful this morning because temperatures are not as low as we thought. What you're about to see is not a joke, especially if you live up in the Northeast. And the bad weather continues today. Meteorologist C.T. Tonklin joins us now with a live look. C.T. Afternoon, I'm Sheila Brummer. In just one week, two local soldiers have been killed while serving our country. What is going on in Omaha? A series of auto thefts. In the first three months of this year, police say there's been a 20% increase from a year ago. The H1N1 virus takes down a healthy man from Omaha. Family and friends are helping him battle back. First game at the new TD Ameritrade Park is in the books with highlights from last night. It's sports director Travis Morgan. Hopefully you're having a thrilling Thursday, 6.30. Sheila Bremer along with meteorologist C.T. Tonklin. Kind of a serious situation for parts of Western Iowa yeah. with that ice storm yesterday. Power is still out today, so they're not wa probably watching us this morning. No, no, not at all. And, and temperatures really haven't changed much at all, so it's still a little bit slippery. Check things out in full detail in two minutes. See then, CT, of course, our top story. More fallout after this wicked winter's latest storm. A thick layer of ice takes down trees, snaps power lines, and may leave some in the dark for days. It is such a mess in western Iowa that some schools have canceled classes today as well. In some of the hardest hit areas, the Iowa towns of Shelby, Harlan, Atlantic, Walnut, Action 3's Devin Patton took us there for last People night's right cleanup. The Heartland are opening their hearts in a big way. In addition to being homeless, many survivors, they have no shoes, no clothing. So Z Coil started taking shoe donations. You can see several of those there. Also donations pouring into the orphan grain train. Boxes of medical supplies, crutches, walkers, and wheelchairs. They're all a moving testament to the eagerness to share. Don't forget tomorrow's telethon, Hope for Haiti, right here in your Action 3 News Station, is being spearheaded by actor George Clooney, musician Wyclef Jean, CNN's Anderson Cooper. They're also hosts, too. You can catch it tomorrow night, 7 to 9 o'clock, right here in your Action 3 News Station. Mm, hard to believe that earthquake was about a week ago. Nine days ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Well, and it's hard to believe we have, well, no sunshine just yet in your first morning forecast. But we'll see. There will be some sunshine later on in the seven-day planner. And we'll check that out coming up at 643. We know people are getting crabby, I think, because they're not seeing the sun, I CT. I'm, I'm just a messenger. No, good thing that we're not crabby, right? No. Another warning for parents this morning. Greco is recalling one and a half million strollers. There's a hinge on the stroller and it's cut off fingers in five children. Strollers were sold at several major chain stores. The models include the Greco Passage, the Alano, and the Spree. Another consumer alert on a popular item that you might have in your freezer right now, maybe. An Indiana company is recalling 2.5 pound cartons of market day chicken pot pies. They were made with all white chicken meat. The problem, the cartons inside of them, they might actually have some straight pins in them. I don't know why for sure, but the pot pies were sold through the internet or catalogs in Iowa and Missouri. To learn more about this recall, go to our website, action3news.com. New details in a deadly train collision in southwest Iowa. Authorities have now released the names of the two crew members killed over the weekend. Crash happened Sunday morning outside of Red Oak, Iowa. The investigation continues into why a coal train rear-ended another train. Parts of the Midwest dodged a big storm yesterday. Look at this huge twister. It is caught on tape just north of St. Louis, Missouri. Fortunately, though, it just tore through some farm fields in Illinois and no one got hurt. We can look some wonderful, though, CT. Not too bad. We, we lucked out on timing for this one, at least at this point in time. Yes, excellent forecast for the weekend anyway. All right, even though it was really cold last night, what, in the 30s, mm -hmm. baseball fans are out in full force last night to check out that brand new stadium. KMTV Action 3's Dave Roberts was there for opening night. Finding that guy or girl who used to make you swoon back in the day is easier than ever before, but you might want to wait before you take the leap. First love. It was a learning experience. Well, we were young, 16, 17. Not always a lasting one. Both of us was heartbroken, and I was like 18, and I was moving out of town, and bye-bye. <laughs> what do you think about first love? I'm not doing this <laughs> It didn't work out. In this high-tech age, finding the one who stole your heart as a teen is only a few clicks away with websites like Google, Zaba Search, and Classmates.com. I'm not sure exactly where he is. The he is Mark, the guy who dumped me in 1990. But that romance from 17 years old or younger is very, very powerful, and those are the people that they most return to. Dr. Nancy Kalish researches rekindled love. Before the internet, usually just singles tried to reconnect. They ended up happily ever after 78% of the time. 
Today, only 5% see success. That's because now two out of every three people have someone at home when they take that plunge into cyberspace. If somebody's married, they shouldn't be looking on the internet for a person or contacting them in any way. Um, and if they do, it's a lot of heartache. Of course, I'm not good at listening to the expert's advice. Oh, he lives in Nebraska. Let's find out where. Ooh, Lincoln, Nebraska is where he lives. With my husband's permission, I head out to ambush my ex. Let's check this out and see if he's home. I'm a little nervous. Hi, is, is Mark Eggert here? Yeah. Um, okay. Mark. <laughs> a woman answers, and at first, things seem a bit awkward. Hey, Mark, how you doing? <laughs> I'm actually doing a special report about finding lost loves. Mark's now a father, a married man with thankfully an understanding wife. Has Mark ever mentioned me? What's your name? Sheila Brummer. Yes, I remember Brummer. Were we just so young or what happened between us? Do you re did my dad do anything to break us up or what happened? Uh, he's a pretty scary guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how shocked were you? Pretty shocked. <laughs> Scale of one to ten, probably a nine. <laughs> All right, well, good to see you again. Yeah. This reunion ends with a hug, but that's not always the case with old loves who make new connections. And little by little, they get hooked into at least an emotional affair, if not a physical affair. Dr. Kalish says 30% of people she surveyed still have feelings for their first love. How about you?